is it to be able to worship God together this morning? You know, so many of those spot songs just spoke so deeply into this topic of today that, um, yeah, that we have stories to tell. It's as if our lives are a bit like a book and we have chapters and we have stories. And, and so we're going to unpack that a little bit today. If I can ask Joel to, to bring on up my lectern and, and I'm going to just pray before, as we head into where God might be taking us today. Amazing God, we are so thankful that you are our God. You are our way maker. You are the one that brings victory out of circumstances that, uh, that are painful and we don't understand why they happen. But we thank you, mighty God, that you are there with us in every chapter, in every story. As you write the book that is our lives, Lord. And we're at different stages. You know, some of us are just at the beginning in the very first chapter, and some might be heading towards the last chapter, Lord. But as we look at the stories of our lives, I pray today that you will help us to see where you have been. Lord, help us this morning to set aside the distractions. We love the sound of kids rustling and chatting. And Lord, for whatever age, whatever demographic we're at, Lord, that you will help us to engage today. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, it's so good to be here, and for some of you, it's um, a significant weekend. It's the Anzac Day long weekend, and for some of you, you are not here because it's the Anzac Day long weekend. You might be online, or we've got a few empty seats because it's the last weekend of school holidays as well, and, and families are doing different things. But, um, but it is interesting, as we stop and look at Anzac Day, and, and we think about the service men and women, and they have so many stories to tell. Well, this photo is actually on the front page of my family photo album, and, um, and one of these guys is a distant relative. I actually don't know which one, um, and, and I know that all three were in the Light Horse Brigade, but it's actually really sad that I know nothing else. I don't know the names of these people, um, and I, I don't know the stories of their lives. And it reminds me that if the stories are not told, the messages are lost. We all have stories. We don't always share them. Some of our stories about our own adventures or misadventures, uh, about our siblings, about our parents, about friends, even the stories that we find in books and on the big screen. We love, as a human race, we love stories. We are actually shaped by our stories. Our stories help us navigate the world. And they help us to understand right from wrong and to provide meaning, says James Bryan Smith. We often say at the end of the story, the moral of the story is, or the thing I learned that day was not to leave a toddler alone with a hose, which my mum discovered when I decided to help her to water the indoor plants with a hose one day. Our stories give us messages. So sometimes our stories also give us God messages. They're the God stories. They, they show some light into who he is, what he has done, and who we are in relationship with him. This photo shows that back in the 1970s, and you can tell it was 70s by the wallpaper, um, I... I was visiting a family friend's farm on Christmas Day. Uh, we'd had our Christmas lunch and some of them had gone off to the, to the local lake to, um, or dam, I actually don't know what it was, but they went skiing, water skiing. And I was walking along the veranda, um, kind of toddling along actually, because I was only little, and I tripped over one of the, the farm dogs that was, that was sleeping on the veranda. Now, that dog quickly woke up, snapped around, and actually took a bite out of my face. As my mum bundled me up and we went with my auntie Alison to the Katanning Hospital, I didn't say a word until I got to the hospital. And I said the simple phrase, that naughty dog bit my face. 
And my mum discovered as they got to the hospital that our regular doctor wasn't there that day. Um, but Dr. Christie was there. And he was amazing at sutures or stitches. And that day I needed 42 stitches behind my ear, under my eye, and around my mouth. The amazing thing is that while I learned to be a little bit cautious of dogs, I learned that God was there to provide the right doctor with the right skill at just the right time on that awful day. And amazingly, they thought that I would need plastic surgery. I never did. A little bit of vitamin E cream and God's miraculous power to provide. I wonder what stories you tell in your family. When my niece was little and avoiding going to sleep, she would often ask me to tell her stories of her dad, my brother, and I when we were little. Our stories of our adventures on the farm or trips to the hospital, uh, adventures at school and the like. But I reflect now and I wonder, did I actually include the God stories in that? Did I share how God had helped in those different circumstances? And looking back, what those things taught me about God, his love, his protection, his goodness and his grace. Do my own life stories tell the God stories? Who he is and what he's done? Well, some of you have heard me speak previously about the heartbreaking research about children in churches and how so many do not have a lasting faith. Cara Powell and the Fuller Institute of Research and Faith Development have identified that best research shows that about half of the kids from great families in great churches nationwide, now this is in America, but it also applies in Australia, about half of those people drift from God and the church by the time they graduate. That's devastating. And Power adds that her teams have been researching to find out what leaders and churches can do, what families, grandparents, parents can do to instill or to nourish and nurture a faith that lasts. One of the problems, she says, is that all too often parents aren't sharing themselves about their own spiritual journey. They'll ask about their children's faith, but they won't always share what, with their kids, what God is doing in their lives and what they're learning about him. Another spiritual hurdle for kids and teens is that all too often kids don't understand the grace of Jesus Christ. She says they've fallen into what Dallas Willard calls the gospel of sin management, which is a gospel all about behaviours and not about a relationship with God. So what's the solution? How can, as a church, we empower parents to be spiritually transparent, to nurture their kids' faith with an accurate view of grace and a right relationship with God? Well, there's actually a number of strategies. There's been a myriad of research and there are eight key things that we can do. One of those is to tell the God stories. And we find this in God's word in Psalm 78. This is a wisdom psalm written to instruct God's people. The theme is the goodness and kindness of God to his stubborn and rebellious people. Asaph began by asking for the attention of God's people, maximum attention, which is what we talk about in MPK, so that they could hear the wisdom as he spoke. So let's read Psalm 78. If you're online, you can quickly find it on your phone. I can't see anybody rustling to find it here because it's going to be on the screens. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable, that is, stories. I will hear, sorry, I will utter hidden things from of old, the things we have heard and known, the things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statues for Jacob, that is the rules, and established the law in Israel. 
which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so that the next generation would know them, even the children not yet born. And in turn, they will tell their children. And then, this is what we pray and hope for, they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. You see, God wanted his people, the Israelites, to tell their children the stories of who he was and what he had done, to explain the rules for right living God's way, so that, we're reading verse 8, they would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. Asaph then goes on to remind his hearers of what God has done. I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. Moses wrote it all down in great detail, and over the next few months, we're actually, as a whole church, we're going to unpack this story of Moses and learn more about his relationship with God. The quick summary is in Psalm 78. God helped them to win battles. There were miracles in Egypt. They were crossing through the Red Sea and the great escape from Pharaoh. There was provision in the wilderness and all these amazing experiences. But sadly, in verse 17, we read, but they continued to sin against him. That is, they dishonoured God, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test. By demanding the food they craved, they missed Egypt and they spoke against God. How heartbreaking. So quickly they had forgotten God's generous love. The Israelite people constantly flipped from promising to love God to complaining again, from honouring God back to being angry and breaking his rules. If we jump ahead to verse 35 in Psalm 78, we read, They remembered that God was their rock, that God most high was their redeemer, the one who had rescued them. But then they would flatter him with their mouths, lying to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was merciful. He forgave their iniquities, that is their sin and their disrespect, And God did not destroy them. Throughout the Old Testament, we see that God is compassionate. He was slow to anger, abounding in love and gracious. The stories of Joseph and Moses, Miriam, Joshua, Rahab, and so many others are significant, not because of the people they were, but because of the God they worshipped. But sadly, so many of the Israelites failed to do what was right. They forgot to tell the stories of God. They didn't pass on their faith to the next generation. And sometimes we fail too. We forget to tell the stories of our own experiences and what the Bible teaches us, what we can teach the next generation. We need to be reminded. We need to tell each other and ourselves the wonderful things that the Lord has done so we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. And today, I'd actually like to to share with you two stories that are real-life stories from people in our church. I'm going to ask Heather and Jim Taylor to come on up. And as they do, I'm actually going to share a story from Ko. You might uh, have seen him around. There's his photo up on the screen. He's going to be live here in the 10.30 service, and he's given me permission to share his story. So it starts off um, last year. He was at school one day, and he was in such excruciating pain. He was bent over in so much pain. His bladder was so painful. They called for his mum, and she's never seen him in so much pain like this before. And they were wondering, what on earth is going on? They rang the ambulance, and the ambulance said, it's actually going to be faster for you to get him straight to hospital yourself than getting, waiting for an ambulance. She didn't even know how she was going to get him to the car because he was in such excruciating pain and couldn't move. But an amazing thing happened. By the time they got to the hospital, K.O. was back to his normal dancing around happy, joyful self. And they were like, what on earth happened? They booked in other medical appointments to check it all out and see what was going on. 
wasn't until that night that Kao and his dad were praying together and Kao said, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. And his dad was like, what? what do, explain that a little bit more. What do you mean? What's going on? And he said, well, when I was sick at school, I prayed that Jesus would heal me. And he did. And when Kao came to tell me this story, full of life and energy, he was, he was able to say, you know, the thing that he learned that day is that Jesus hears him. Jesus does have the power to heal, which is what we've been learning in MPK. And he has not forgotten that he can trust Jesus to be with him no matter what. Just a brilliant story. And I'll invite you guys to come on over. This is uh, Jim and Heather Taylor. And they also have a story to share. So I'm going to ask you guys, what was the problem you were facing and how did you feel? Well, we had to leave our house because it was deemed dangerous. And now we understand how hard it is to find somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. It was, we just almost thought someone said put a caravan on your lawn, but we don't have lawn. Yep. So that, that was, yeah, we hunted and hunted. Months went and weeks went and praise God we had a builder that said, yes, I'll wait two more weeks. Mm. That was the problem. Yes. Massive. Massive problem. Your house needed renovations, major dangerous stuff happening and you had to, to move out with nowhere to go. Um, so I wonder then if you can tell me um, how, how that was making you feel at that time. Personally, it left a very heavy weight on our shoulders. Mm. Time was ticking by, and where were we to go? So through Min here in church, she informed us that her property was coming available, and we contacted the agency, and we went and had a chat, and it can only mean through God's blessing and many, many prayers, a day and a half later, we received a phone call. We did. It was quite we did. amazing. We, we, did. We, we got together, we were planning for the weekend away. Don't forget to register. Um, we were planning for the weekend away, and I just asked you guys, well, how are you going? Just a general chit-chat question, and it was like, oh, my goodness, we've got this huge problem. We don't know what to do, and... You were even finding it a bit hard to pray to God about it. I gave up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I yep. do argue with God. And I told God, look. He's big enough. Have... He can handle it. So, yep. I need a house. I need a house. We need a house, God. We need a house. Yeah. Yeah. And so we just got chatting and I was moving out of my house, but the timeline didn't quite line up and we weren't sure if it was going to work. But a few weeks later, when you still hadn't found anything else came to have a look at my house. Um, and can you tell us what happened when you went to the real estate agent and, and were, was applying? Well, uh, well she, you know, she was really good. Um, she got us to fill the forms and everything, and then within 36 hours, we got the call to say mm -hmm. we got the house. So they didn't even advertise to anybody else. I was breaking my lease, so I needed somebody to move in. Um, and, yeah, it just was incredible how God just put the puzzle pieces together and reduced the stress. <laughs> and the most uh, astonishing thing, having received the phone call, it's hard to explain the, um, the burden or the, the weight on our shoulders just vanished. And that can only mean through many prayers and the blessing of God. Yeah. That we received this message that we had the house. Mm. That's Somewhere where to we live. are. Yep, that's that the house. photo of them in front of the house, snapped it the other day. And yeah. Heather, what did this teach you about God? He still loves me, you know. I'm, I mean, I fight with him. I love him, but sometimes I don't because he doesn't listen to me. Um, it's serious. Don't laugh. It's very serious, this. But then he still loves me. Mm. So 
and he will answer prayers. And I'm going to take this opportunity to say thank you to, I know, pastors in this church, friends in this church. You guys prayed. You prayed and you prayed and you prayed. And so don't give up, people. Don't give up. Mm. I'm telling you. Yep. Don't mm. ever give up on God. Yeah, he hears the cries of our heart. Even when we can't express it in words, he knows what's going on and he sees you, he knows you and he's provided for you. So it's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Let's give them a clap. It is brilliant to hear the God stories that remind us of who God is and what he has done. And I love um, hearing stories, so keep telling me your stories. Um, we are a species that is actually addicted to story. Even when our body goes to sleep, Jonathan Cutchell says, our mind stays up all night telling itself stories. We love stories. We pay attention to stories and we learn so much from them. Susan Beaumont advises organisations and churches going through at times of transition and change, and she states that telling a story is so important because reflecting on the past directs our future. She emphasises that remembering rightly is important work, and the way in which we shape our memories and tell them from one generation to the next has powerful implications for identity, values, clarification, and soul tending. That's our faith development. We remember, what, how we remember shapes how we interpret our present circumstances, how we live into our values, how we make decisions, and how we claim our purpose. Memory work is soul tending work. It is important that we take time to reflect and engage in rightful remembering, particularly for painful events. Miroslav Volf, now that's a really cool name, why don't you tell the person next to you his name, Miroslav Volf. Well, this guy is a professor um, of theology and the director of the Yale Centre of Faith and Culture. And he says that in our stories we must include four key elements. Firstly, remember as truthfully as possible. Don't exaggerate or lie, but tell the truth when you tell your story. Secondly, acknowledge the wrong that was done. Don't keep it invisible, but bring it into God's healing light. Thirdly, view the remembered circumstance or experience in a new light, telling how you have learnt um, telling of the healing process, the redemption, the story of how what the enemy meant for evil has been turned into good. Share that as you tell your story because it's important for us to see where God's love and grace exists. And then the fourth thing is to protect the victims from further suffering and violence, which means maintaining confidentiality unless you've got permission to use their name and to be careful who your audience is. So these four things help us as we start to think about our stories. And I have four wonder questions that we're gonna quickly go through today to help you think about the stories you tell and how they can be God's stories. For the, the first wonder question is why tell the stories? Sometimes we tell stories to process things ourselves, to understand, to heal, to entertain others, and to make friends, to find some common ground or connection. We tell stories to relate to other people and to help them. Lisa Cron is a story coach, and she helps people to write gripping stories. She says that it turns out that our opposable thumbs are not as valuable as stories, because opposable thumbs teach us how to hang on, but stories teach us what to hang on to. When we share the stories of God in our lives, we speak about his character, we speak about our faith and who it is that we hold on to. Our God stories share with others that God is kind, God provides, he's compassionate and generous. Telling God stories informs our faith and the faith of future generations. As we read earlier in Psalm 78, so the next generation would know them. 
even the children yet to be born, and they would in turn tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, and they would keep, but would keep his commands. We need to keep telling the, the God stories so that future generations know who he is and put their trust in him. Kids, I've asked one wonder question. I wonder if you know some other wonder questions that I might be able to ask. I'm going to ask a where and when do you tell the stories? Perhaps you think Bible stories are just for kids. Maybe you read them to your kids at night before they go to bed, which is a really valuable time to spend in that bedtime routine, discussing and praying together. But Bible stories are not just for children. They are God's stories for all of us. And we learn so much about God as we read his word. They are examples of God being with his people. He will continue to speak to us in the future as we continue to tell his stories of truth. Perhaps there are special occasions when you retell classic family stories and God stories. God established Passover, Christmas, Easter for us to annually be telling his stories and our place in them. When Moses wrote the Ten Commandments and the story of the great exodus from Egypt, God said in Deuteronomy 11, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So in any and every situation, as you listen to God and listen to those around you, Take the opportunity to tell your stories. When appropriate, be vulnerable and talk about the times that you've been anxious or in pain and where you have seen God help you through those times. We can learn from one another when we share our stories. Last year, my Connect group took turns uh, in sharing our stories and hearing how we've come to faith and where God has been in the highs and the lows of life. And it was just so valuable, not just to go deeper in our relationship with one another, but to understand that there are others on this journey with us, and we do not need to do it alone. So the next wonder question is what? What and how will you tell the story? It's not just about the facts. In MPK, next term, we're going to be looking at the life of Moses, and, and we don't want it to just be, you know, a wonderful adventure story about this incredible, interesting character full of facts of what were the ten plagues and, and uh, you know, who did what when and all of those things, but we actually see that this is a story that reveals the character of God and his relationship with Moses. So we want to go a bit deeper with the kids as we talk about Moses, who God is through his story and how it relates to them. Psalm 66, Come and hear all you who fear God, that is, those who respect and are willing to listen to God, who believe in him. Let me tell you what he has done for me, what he's done for my soul, the transformation work that God has done. It's not just about the facts, but the story and what's at the heart of it. How you present your story with animation and enthusiasm, passion and clarity, that's all important. Maybe you'll show a special photo or, or hold an object of significance. Go to a particular place where there are rich memories and open the Bible together and read those verses that spoke to you. Being truthful, being real, knowing your audience and being sensitive to their needs. That is how we tell our stories. Lastly, so we've had a why, where, when, what, how. What's another wonder question that we haven't had? Who? That's it. Who? Who do you share your stories with? Well, most definitely your children and your grandchildren, the next generation. But honestly, you can tell anyone, anybody that has the time to listen. And kids, you can tell your parents what's been going on for you. You can tell your grandparents, your MPK leaders, 
Whoever you are with, we can tell them and remind them of the goodness of God. In Mark chapter 5, we read about a man who experienced the life transformation of Jesus. His mind was given peace, and he wanted to continue with Jesus and follow him. But Jesus said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. He was instructed to go home to tell his friends and his family the goodness of God. So can I encourage you not to neglect the opportunities to write, record, speak out and share the news of what the Lord has done for you. Maybe you have a family journal or a blessing jar full of post-it notes photo albums and special items that point to a memory, reminders to tell your friends and family the stories of God. I'm going to invite the worship team to come on back up and just take a moment to pause because I understand that there are times in our lives when things don't go according to our plan. Some stories are ridiculously tough. They're heartbreaking And we can choose to run to God or we can choose to run away from God. We can get angry and blame him or we can seek his help and support. We all face storms and giants in our lives. Sometimes we have to do hard things and be courageous. It's so good to tell the stories, to remind one another, God has been with us before, he will do it again. He's been there and we can trust him. He is the one that Moses discovered that we can all trust all of the days of our lives. So as I look back on my life and I look at the scars, I'm reminded of God's goodness and his provision in my life. I'm reminded that he was there. He provided the right doctor with the right skill, the right time when I needed it most. Thank you. Let's sing about his great goodness.